The book of Acts this morning, the book of Acts, wasn't that wonderful? Sometimes we forget, we get so caught up in the busyness of serving the Lord that it's not about religion, but it's about a relationship. And uh, sometimes we miss that, and I asked the question this morning, how long has it been? Since you just talked with the Lord, since you fellowship with Him, isn't He sweet this morning? He is so sweet, and it's so good to see y'all, good to see everyone this morning. Good to be in the Lord's house, and I, man, summertime, we, we're all running here, there, and yonder. We've been gone all week. I, I believe it's been five weeks already we've been gone this summer, uh, but hopefully this is about it, but we've got teenagers leaving in the morning for camp. Some's already gone. Uh, kids camp leaving next week, and so it's busy, 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 but isn't God good? God is so faithful, and I appreciate your faithfulness this morning. Acts chapter 16, I do want to ask you to stand for the reading of God's Word. Acts 16, and in verse 11. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came in with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened that she attended unto the things that were spoken to Paul. And when she, ha she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come unto my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Open our hearts to it. Lord, give me power to preach your word. Move in this place today. Move among us, Lord. Lord, we pray that souls will be saved. We pray that us as saved will be drawn closer to you. Lord, there may be some today that are saved that have just lost the joy of their salvation. Lord, would you restore unto us the joy of our salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you this morning about the treasure of salvation. The treasure of of salvation. And salvation truly is a treasure, isn't it? Amen. Being saved and knowing Jesus Christ is the greatest treasure a man can possess. I want you to know that we get our priorities out of order sometimes and the world uh, is so easy sometimes to get things out of whack. But may I tell you, the most precious thing in the world is knowing Jesus as your personal Savior. That's greater than riches. It's greater than jobs. It's greater than anything that you can receive in this world. And that is knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Child of God, nothing should be greater to you than your knowledge of Jesus Christ. I know sometimes as God's people we get things out of whack, but understand that we must cherish our salvation today. We must never lose sight that that should be the most precious thing in our life is our relationship between us and Jesus Christ. Knowing Jesus ought to be the most precious thing to you. It ought to be greater than anything in the world, greater than sports greater than hobbies, greater than jobs, greater than riches, greater than possessions. May I tell you the greatest thing to you in your life, if you're saved, is knowing Jesus as your Savior. It ought to be your treasure. You ought to cherish it more than anything in the world. Treasure is simply anything laid up in store, a treasure or wealth. A man said the other day, he said, Preacher, you're rich. And I said, you have no idea how rich I am. And I'll promise you, if you look at my checking account, I'm not the richest man in the world. But if you look at my heart, I promise you, I'm the richest man in the world. When I look and see what God's done for me, I am super wealthy. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup is overflowed. I'm telling you, I'm a wealthy man. My 401k may not say it. The bank statement may not say it. But Brother Chuck, if you know Jesus, you got all the wealth a man could ask for. 
I want you to know he's the most precious thing to me in my life and he ought to be to every one of us today. Treasure, the word treasure is used throughout the word of God. 88 times in the Bible we find the word treasure. Treasure, something that we lay up in store, something that means a lot to us, something that we put, number one, 69 times in the Old Testament, the word treasure is used, and 19 times in the New Testament, the word treasure is used. I want you to know that Jesus taught us a lot about treasures. That's something that he taught in his ministry. In Luke 12, 34, it says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Something we need to know about treasures is treasures will always lead our hearts. You want to know where a man's treasure is? You look and see where his heart is. You want to see what means the most to somebody? You look at their heart. And when something has your heart, not only does it have your heart, but it has your mind, and it has your body, and it has your time, and it has your investment. When you find something that's a treasure, you will put your heart on that, and that will lead and guide you in your life. And whatever you think is number one, that's going to be where your time is invested. That's going to be where everything you're about is invested in that. May I tell you, as a child of God, Jesus ought to be your treasure. And your heart ought to be on Jesus before it's anywhere else. And you want to find a man's heart, you want to find a man's treasure, go to his heart and you will see what is driving that individual. I pray as God's people that Jesus would drive us. I pray that our relationship with the Lord would drive us and that would be our focus. I pray today that our treasure would be Jesus Christ and that we would put our hearts on the Lord so that our heart would guide our mind and guide our bodies, that our entire self, our entire time, our entire life would be invested in Jesus Christ. You say, preacher, why should Jesus be my treasure? Because I believe I was His treasure. You know why? Because his heart was set on me. His mind was set on you when he went to Calvary. An innocent man died for the guilty. I want you to know that I ought to give my life for him because he gave his life for me. And he gave his life for you. In Mark 10, 21, it says, Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way. Sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and take up the cross, and follow me. Number one, true treasures are laid up in heaven. This stuff you have here is not a true treasure. Those things that you get from the Lord is a true treasure. Those things that you have because of your relationship with God is truly a treasure. I want you to know that you can get treasures in heaven. You can't work to get to heaven. The only way to get to heaven is by placing faith in Jesus Christ. But after you get saved, you're to serve the Lord. And when you serve the Lord, you get these treasures, you get crowns, you get rewards for serving God. And I, I don't know about you, but if we would look to the Bible, we would understand it's not really what you get here, it's what you get there that is the most important. And sometimes we miss that so much. Something else in Luke 12, 33 says, Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not cold or not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not. Do you know why we need to lay up treasures in heaven rather than laying up treasures here? Because those things in heaven will last for all of eternity. The things that you have right now, you're only allowed to keep in this life. And sometimes you don't get to keep them for your entire life here. But those things that you have with the Lord, you will have for all of eternity in glory land. I pray that Jesus would be our treasure. I pray that the things of God would mean most to us. I pray that he would be the preeminence of our hearts and our life. Do you love Jesus this morning? Is he your treasure this morning? Is he the one that guides you and leads you? I wonder when you wake up in the morning, who comes to your heart first? I wonder what comes to your mind first. Does the Lord even have a place in your busy schedule? 
Oh, I pray as God's people that Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, would be the preeminence in our life. Number one, the treasure, our love, our passion, our desire. May I say that he's worthy of it today? May I say that he deserves it today? As we look in this passage of Scripture in Acts 16, if you're awake this morning, say amen. amen. All right. I want you to notice this passage of Scripture. We find where the Apostle Paul is going uh, to preach and teach, and he is following the Lord here, and, and the Lord is sending them out to, uh, to teach, and God sends people uh, His way. And it's amazing the people that, that came in the path of the Apostle Paul. As long as Paul was following the Lord, he found people to tell about Jesus Christ. And people were saved in the ministry of Paul because Paul followed the Lord. Now I want us to look at this account of when he met this woman by the name of Lydia. It said in verse 14 that a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, worshipped God. I want you to notice here about the person of this treasure. Thyatira is the city. It's a, a city that still exists today in modern day Turkey, what we know there of Asia Minor. This woman Lydia was a wealthy the lady of Thyatira, who was a maker and seller of purple cloth and fine linen. This woman was dedicated of, of dyeing these linens uh, for the sole purpose of selling to royalty. I want you to know that this dye uh, that, that she would have would come from these snails. And it was a, a very expensive uh, ink, if you will. This was a very expensive chemical. And this woman with this uh, position and this job that she had was a very wealthy lady. It is believed that this lady probably had lots of possessions because she was a hard worker. She invested so much in her life. And, and, and of what she did in her life, she made a lot of money. Man, she had a lot of things. And I believe she had a lot of great possessions. She probably had great popularity. She, she was probably well-dressed everywhere she went. I believe that this woman had it all together, if you will. Well, one day this woman, who thought she had it all, one day this woman that thought she had it all figured out, came across a man by the name of the Apostle Paul. And I want you to know that this day, this lady's life was fixing to change. And she was fixing to understand that in her life, all of those possessions and all of that money, all of that was not near as important as knowing Jesus as her personal Savior. Now I want you to notice what it said here in verse 14. It said, which worship God. They worship God. In that city, they worship God. May I tell you, just because you're worshiping God doesn't mean it's right. Amen. Just because you're worshiping God doesn't mean that you're going to get to God. In fact, Jesus said, many will say unto me, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in thy name? May I tell you, you can serve God your entire life and be lost. You can serve God your entire life and if you don't know Jesus, you're going to die and go to hell. It don't matter what you've done for the Lord. It don't matter how you serve God. It doesn't matter if you worship Him your entire life. You can worship Him your entire life and still miss the boat. Understand they worship God. Man, they had the looks of religion. This was Judaism. And they had, they had all of these works. And man, they went to the temple. They went to the synagogue. They had it all figured out. But they just worship. It was dead. I want you to know they were going through the motions. And they were just going to this place because it was Sunday or it was Saturday. And it was the day of worship. But there was nothing inside. And may I tell you, it's not good enough just to have it on the outside. You got to have it on the inside. And these people were just going through the outward actions and this woman was religious. This woman had it all together when it comes to the eyes of the world. But it doesn't matter how much religion you have. Religion cannot take the place of a relationship with Jesus. Religion will not save you. Can I say something here? Being a Baptist will not take you to heaven. Being a Methodist is not going to take you to heaven. 
May I tell you, when we get to glory land, our, our, our religion's not going to be tattooed on our forehead. The precious name of Jesus will be on our forehead. May I tell you that it's at His name, in His name alone, religion is sending people to hell when relationships with Jesus Christ takes people to glory land. Amen? It's not good enough to be religious. It's not good enough just to worship the Lord. Do you know that the Islam faith worships God? Do you know that they serve the same God that you serve? And they love that same God that we love, but they're going through a different source. They're going through Muhammad. Do you realize the Jews are worshiping the same God that we're worshiping today? But they're going through a different source. They're going through their works and they're going through the coming Messiah. But us as Christians are set apart from anybody else in the world. Hello? Y'all awake now? We're a little different than anybody else in the world. you know why? Because we go through that one called Jesus. And I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come unto the Father but by Him. May I tell you, it's not about works. It's not about religion. It's not about memberships. It's about citizenship of heaven and glory land. It's about knowing Jesus. That's what it's all about. And you can gain the whole world and if you never got saved, you've missed it all. But man, if you get in this world and you find Jesus, and may I tell you, every man, every woman has that opportunity. When we stand before the Lord, we will stand without excuse. Everybody will have that opportunity to be saved and to know the Lord and to go to glory land. Every man and every woman that goes to hell is there because they chose to be there. God don't send anybody to hell. Y'all get that? <laughs> Your decision of rejecting Jesus is what sends you to that place. The greatest possession in the world is knowing Christ as your Savior. Jesus is the Messiah. There's not but one way to get to God and it's through the Son. Hold on, let me say that again. There's only one way to get to God and it's through the Son. Only one way. The only way, may I tell you, that religion is not good enough. Judaism had it all. They had the personal works. May I tell you, God's not pleased with your works. He's not impressed with what you've done, but He's impressed with the work of Christ. He's impressed with what Jesus did for you at Calvary. I want you to look here in verse 14. If you're with me, say amen. It said, a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God. Now notice now the possession. Hurt us. How did it start? How did this woman begin to change her life? How did she re receive this treasure? Number one, she heard. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The most precious message in all the world is that Jesus saved. The most powerful message in all the world is that Jesus saves. While promised land must do everything to get out and to bring people in, we must never get away from the truth that our first job is to preach Jesus and Him crucified. How will they know if we don't tell them? We must preach the truth. May I tell you that singing has its place. Awana has its place. Ministries has its place. But nothing takes the place of the preaching of the Word of God. The preaching and teaching of the Word of God is where our power is today. If we want to be an effective church, if we want to be an effective Christian, then we will share the gospel message of Jesus. It ought to be the greatest story that you know. Man, everybody got a story to tell, don't they? Man, we gather around with our buddy. Man, I got a story. Man, I got a story. I wonder how many doesn't mind sitting around telling the greatest story of them all. I wonder how many of us is, is just so in love with Jesus and He's such our treasure that we're willing to share that gospel message. May I tell you, your, your family's not going to get saved until they hear. May I tell you, our friends, our community's not going to get saved until they hear. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. I praise the Lord that God sent a preacher my way to preach the truth to me. There was times I sat back there on that back row, that back pew, gripping that, that, that pew, thinking, boy, that preacher done lost his mind. I can't believe that preacher going to call me out today. Y'all ain't never thought that, have you? 
Man, man, that preacher's crazy. Man, man, man. I praise the Lord that God sent a man to me to preach the truth in front of me. And let me tell you something. I didn't always have to accept it. I had that opportunity to reject. But the Word of God got to me. And I am what I am today because somebody planted a seed. Somebody planted a seed, and God, then God sent somebody to water that seed. But only one brought forth the increase, and that's the Lord. Amen, church? We need to share the gospel. The gospel is effective today. We have got to the place that if we bring in the bands, that will bring the people. If we bring in a certain type of music, that will bring the people. If we have this kind of pastor or that kind of pastor, that will bring the people. May I tell you, our church should not be built upon a man. It should not be built upon a, a, a certain idea. It should not be built upon music ministries. It ought not be built on any ministry, but it ought to be built upon the preaching of God's Word. Because that's where our power lies. Notice this. Heard us whose heart the Lord opened. Y'all ever been preaching to somebody and you preach to them so long, you just want to grab them by the neck and say, would you get saved? <laughs> Y'all have? I'm not the only one. Y'all ever get to that place where you just get wore out telling somebody about the Lord? And I'll tell you, this is when they're going to get it, when the Lord opens the heart. And there's been people that I've preached to and preached to and preached to, and it just seems like all of a sudden, boom, the light was turned on. The Holy Spirit of God was ready. I'll never forget Connor coming down every time we had invitation. Daddy, I won't be saved. Daddy, I won't be saved. Daddy, I won't be saved. Oh, I won't be saved because he, he was hearing. But he just wasn't ready. He wasn't lost. You got to get lost before you get saved. And I said, Connor, I want you to pray. Lord, teach me how to be saved. And you keep seeking the Lord, and there's going to come a day He's going to come seeking you. Well, every service, He'd go right down there and pray, right down there and pray, right down there and pray. One Sunday night, He skipped up the altar and came right to me. He said, Daddy, I'm ready to be saved. I said, why? Because I'm dying and going to hell. Something clicked. You know what it was? It was the Holy Spirit of God that opened up his heart and showed him that he was lost and showed him that, that without Jesus, that he'd never be saved. I can come in here and we can put on some of the most dramatic music. We can come in here and put on this show and try to woo people with emotion. But only the Holy Spirit of God can open up the heart of man. And I can sit here and tell you till I'm blue in the face. But until God opens your heart, you'll never see it. But notice what she did next. The Lord opened the heart. And notice what it said here in verse 14, that she attended. The word attended means to hold, to attach, to cleave, to accept. She heard, the Lord opened her heart, and then she accepted what God was doing in her life. She accepted the words of the preacher that day, and she trusted in Jesus and made Him uh, her personal Savior. That day she found a new treasure because she accepted. May I tell you, you'll never get why we do what we do here until you accept the Lord. I've seen men and women say, Preacher, I, I just want to... You'll never figure it out. God never told you to figure it out. He told you to have faith and trust. Well, Preacher, if I can... If I, you trust in the Lord. You accept Him. You accept Him. And if you say, well, I'll wait, that's denying. If you say, well, I'll wait till I get this hold. I'll wait till I get this out of my soul. That's denying the Lord. Accept the Lord today. The message has been preached. Attend to it. The Lord is opening the hearts of men. Attend to it. Accept it. Apply it to your life. And that day, all that money she had didn't mean nothing because she just met Jesus. And her whole life began to change. I tell you, when God saves you, He changes you too. And that day her life began to change. And I want you to notice what it said there in verse uh, 14 and 15. It said, and she was baptized. I tell you what, when you get saved, you follow Jesus in scriptural baptism. Oh, boy, it got quiet there. 
When you get saved, if Jesus is a treasure to you, then you'll follow him in scriptural baptism. That is the first act of obedience, is following Jesus in baptism. If he means that much to you, then stand up and profess him as your Savior. If he gets that real down in here, then he'll get that real outside. you got to tell them. And when she was baptized and her household, Jesus became so precious that she took Jesus home with her. If us as mom and daddies would get to the place that Jesus is more precious than anything, our households would be saved. Our households will be households that bring God honor and glory. May I tell you, our household needs the Lord. Our neighbors need the Lord. But if He's not precious to you, you'll never tell them about Him. He must become a treasure in your heart. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. This woman met Jesus. It impacted her so much that she had to have it. Now go down in verse 40. You know the story, the Philippian jailer's fixing to get saved. Paul and Silas is fixing to uh, go to prison and all this. To go to the very last verse... And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. This Jesus became such a possession, such a treasure to this lady, that she made him her life. She went home and she housed the church. She housed the assembly of brothers and sisters in Christ. Not only did it get in her house, not only did it become part of her household, but I want you to know her heart was so open that she opened the arms of her home to every Christian that would come by and said, you come in here and we'll worship Jesus. May I tell you, if you were caught in this day, you could be put to death. In this day of Christians were caught worshiping the Lord openly and publicly. They could lose their life. It's still that way in Turkey today. And, and, and Christianity was such an issue there. And the world hated them so bad that they would persecute them. And this woman had to make a stand in order to serve the Lord. But when something is that precious to you, you don't mind. You don't mind standing for something when it means that much to you. I ask you this morning, how much does he mean to you? Where does he place in your life? If you've never been saved, can I ask you something this morning? It's just you and the Lord. I want to ask you this question. Don't answer out loud. If you died right now, where would you spend eternity? If you die, I'm asking everybody in this room, if you died right now, where would you spend eternity? If that answer is hell, you need to be saved today. If the answer is I don't know, I want you to come down and let me show you how to be saved. Let me answer those questions for you. God is in this place. The Word of God has been preached. People are hearing. We need to be more than hearers. We need to be doers of the Word of God. And the Lord is opening our hearts. And now it's time to attend to the things of the Lord. It's time to accept the Word of God this morning. And if your answer is hell, if your answer is preacher, I've never been saved, you need to be saved right here, right now. You say, preacher, I'm, I'm going to get embarrassed if I walk that aisle. May I tell you, you got nothing but fans in this place. And I promise you, if you let go of, of that pride and let go of that pew today, you're going to hear rejoice, rejoicing and shouting in this place. I promise you, there would be nothing better today than see a sinner find Jesus and get saved. May I tell you, this preacher would rejoice with you. Child of God, if you would rejoice with him, would you raise your hand? Ain't nobody in here judging you today. We want to see God in this place. We want to see Him work in our life. We want to see Him redeem souls. And He wants to do it. But we've got to accept Him. Child of God, where does He place in your life? I want to ask you to stand very quiet, very reverent.
As we sing, I want to ask you to come. If you need to be saved, come. If you just want to come to these altars, come. If you just got to make a public decision, I want you to come. She's just going to play softly. Just bow your heads where you are, close your eyes, nobody's looking around. And while she plays, y'all come.